Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and right here I have a cool exhausted dye bath that we had used last night. And since I don't like to leave any dye behind, we are going to use some leftover fluorescent dyes on this Knit Picks Bare Swish DK yarn to create a fun fluorescent colorway. Now this yarn was completely dry. I have not pre-soaked it, but you can see that this is a yarn that absorbs color, or sorry, it does absorb color quickly as well, but it does absorb water pretty quickly. So I can get away without pre-soaking it. Now the heat you hear is a steamer basket that I have nearby, but there is currently no heat here in the pan. The fluorescent colors I'm using today are leftovers of Dharma Fluorescent Fuchsia and Dharma uh, Fluorescent Lemon. These bottles happen to be 1% stock solutions, but I have some remnants of it in cups. Uh, and so we will just be sort of taking some of this and adding it onto our yarn today. And there is a lot of acid in here, but we do not yet have any heat. And that's because I wanted to rinse out these cups a bit first um, before we started adding more. But I think you can see, like, if I move this around, these colors spread out a bit. But because of the acid, they are starting to strike but this will allow us to manipulate things and play and doing this in a cool situation means that I'm not going to risk melting any of these syringes or anything else that I am working on cleaning out. Oh, let's not suck yarn up that syringe. Mm -hmm. And it's just honestly a lot of fun to use up leftover residual color using this kind of technique. And don't worry, I've got more residual color. But I thought that we could create something softer by starting with um, no heat. Because see right now that looks fairly harsh. And ultimately, I think we're going to have less than a total of, goodness, 20 milliliters of dye stock in here. Because I had originally added 20 milliliters of 1% stock solution to 150 milliliters of water. And I used a bunch of that on a project. And so then this is all that's left over. And... We are having some fun, but you can see just how pigmented this is. And there's still more of it. Wow, this is looking bright. Super, super bright. Um, we might end up losing a lot of the yellow if things sp start spreading out a bit too much. I am curious. I do want to flip it over, even if that means that I might lose some of that bright yellow. Yeah, I think the yellows are hitting a bit before some of those pinks, even though things are clearly starting to strike all the way around. But we're just creating something sort of random and fun. And it's amazing how pigmented these fluorescent colors are. A little goes a long way. I still have a tiny bit of the color left. I'm just sort of softening it here. I think this is a good example of how you really do need the heat plus acid. But, oof. I like what is happening. We've got this day glow color. I am gonna turn on my gas burners until we start to see some movement on the surface. 
um, and then I will heat it for about 10 minutes. And I still have a tiny bit of these colors that I pulled left, um, and we will use that sort of as needed on this skein. I am so excited to see how this will look under a black light. I gotta tell ya. Now, I have a feeling that the fluorescent fuchsia is a lot like purple pop and some of these other colors. I mean, actually, the, the pink in the fluorescent fuchsia might actually be the pink from the purple pop because there's actually some like blue mixed in there. So, sort of like a hint that some things might uh, take a bit of time to absorb. So I'm adding just some dots of color right now. Oops, that was not quite a dot. Fine. I had my plan and then I went and well I didn't ruin it, but I went and did something else. I was like, oh okay fine, I did a little stripe. Let's make these a little actually that's striking pretty fast which I mean I do really really like uh, I think that this is beautiful um, we will have some nice asymmetry this is not what we would call a repeating colorway uh, by any stretch but I'm going bigger around the tie with some of this yellow And I think that this is a beautiful, beautiful skein of yarn. We are on low heat, and I'm going to go ahead and let this sit here on the heat for around 25 minutes. Um, and then we're going to let it cool completely in the pan, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, I am now going to turn off the heat because those 25 minutes are up. I have a feeling... Oh, we've mostly cleared actually um, but there still could be some residual pinks in there I'm pouring in some extra vinegar just because I want to leave no vinegar behind and I'd already poured it in a cup so I had it <laughs> but I'm gonna leave things in here to cool completely and then we'll wash it this yarn is 100% superwash merino but I still think it's best to not try to shock temperature too much which is why I want to let it cool first the yarn is completely cool. Now let's wash it. I'm getting some softer, more pastel vibes versus the neon fluorescent that these colors are. And that is in a huge part, I think, because there's not a ton of dye in here. Um, but I'm curious to see how vibrant these colors will or won't look once it is dry. I'm adding a little bit of some clear just so just to take some bleeding. I think that the fluorescent fuchsia is a bleeder, but again, we used so little dye what was left over, and yeah, that's looking great. Um, so I'm going to now there's just a few more times to wash off that soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. I don't think my camera can really pick up the awesomeness that is this yarn. While I was dyeing this Leave No Dye Behind, I thought it would end up being more mute um, as the colors mixed together, even though we were playing with fluorescent tones to begin with. But this is neon and vibrant, and I cannot wait to go take a peek at it under a black light. All right, so the orange seems to be a little more and the pink is fairly fluorescent there too but the orange is definitely ooh, look at that that's standing out so so nice um there's areas for sure ooh, especially maybe over here you can see spots where we really got that dye a little more concentrated before it spread out but overall the whole yarn is glowy and awesome why, oh why, oh why is there no fluorescent blue? All I want to do is make a fluorescent neon rainbow. I mean, I could still do the neon rainbow. There are blue dyes that look fairly neon, but that's not really the point.
point. The point is that I want to be able to look at this rainbow under a black light. And I'm honestly not sure, because I haven't really looked into this, what colors are actually fluorescent. But I have a feeling that the yellow and pink, they're fluorescent. The orange might be its own thing or could potentially be a mixture. But the greens and purples, the purple, which definitely breaks, has some non-fluorescent blue in there. The same might be the true for the green, but I just haven't played around with that enough yet. So ultimately, you know, it's, I think that you get the best that you can. And I am very excited to look at all of these colors under the black light eventually. But I'll keep dreaming that someone can invent that fluorescent blue dye. And I know I'm not the only one who would want that. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Leave No Dye Behind. I like to use leftover dye for a few reasons. Uh, one, I don't like to waste it, um, both for environmental reasons, but also for financial reasons. Back when I started, I held on to that excess food coloring because I had limited supplies and I didn't want to let it go to waste when I could use it for another really fun project. And now that my resources as an indie dyer have expanded, I have held on to that because whenever I find that whenever I sort of take away some constraints and I'm just going to play and sort of randomly see what happens, I end up creating some of my favorite yarns. Um, and so maybe that sort of limitless way is, well, I really have been trying to pull that into more of my planned projects as well, but it's just so much fun to see what can happen with everything that's just left over and just how much pigment really is left. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help support all of the content we are doing here, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with yarn that has been featured in these videos. And so you can bring home yarn that you watched me create while supporting the channel at the same time. If that's not a win-win-win, I don't know what is. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment below. Uh, do you have any suggestions for the Leave No Die Behind series? I look forward to hearing what you think. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.